Good afternoon and welcome back. This is our second webinar on the final seminar that began with the tour in Sandona on May 15. Scuola di Ingegneria is a well-established reality at national level thanks to a series of activities that is, has been carried out for more than six years now. Scuola di Ingegneria is sponsored by the Consiglio Superiore dei Lavori Pubblici and Ancia Nazionale and is a provider for the Consiglio Nazionale Ingegneri, therefore at national level. Our mission matches perfectly with the format of European to serve as a link between basic training, namely substantial university education and the business world and try to fill the gap. We are focusing a lot on young people and I am enthusiastic about that. We need to help young people. Unlike today's generations, we did very well right out of school and that's something we all feel. We do it not because we have to, but rather to go the extra mile for our youth. I read Metabolic Vitality, Inclusive Vitality, that's beautiful. European launches this challenge to designers on urban regeneration. The more we go forward, the more we will transition towards an increasingly conscious use of land, which perhaps some of my colleagues did not do a few decades ago, and therefore urban regeneration becomes a fundamental element. This is why we need young designers, their ideas, the ability to look through their eyes and think through their minds. I have the pleasure of being on the commission at the presidency of the Council of Ministers, of the PSMT, Extraordinary Tourist Mobility Plan, in particular on its Progress Review Committee. One of the assets of PSMT is exactly what you are doing today. And I just want to send my greetings to you and wish you all the best luck especially to the young people, to start looking through their eyes to improve ourselves. I would like to take a couple of minutes to thank those who made this contest possible because opportunities only arise if there is someone who thinks. And I would like to thank Marilia and architect Matteo Maggio, audacious young man who acted as a catalyzer for his city. Also, during the event Future Communities, thanks to the mayor, Mr. Cerazer, and ATVO and its president, Fabio Turchetto, because they believe that the competition is an opportunity for growth. And I would like to thank our president, because they really made a lot. There was a lot of work behind all of this. Architect Anabuzaki and Franco Gazzari for their hard work in disseminating the philosophy of competitions to local public administrations. And I would like to thank European Italia and the person of its president, Virginia Giandelli, and National Secretary Marilia Vesco. I will be available to the colleagues of Venice are like Matteo Maggio want to personally promote change. Together we will be the architects of a new renaissance 
or the spectators of the new Middle Ages. But uh, I'm happy today because we have succeeded in bringing a competition to Eastern Venice, which is full of energy, vision and thought. I'm an architect, urban planning. I've known Europe and since the beginning I am president now, but I've known it since 1988. Living cities leads us to think that places will be able to adapt to different needs of cities. Cities will no longer be a traditional list of separate functions, but spaces that can be homes, schools, offices, squares, parks, theatres, bookshops, museums, places of entertainment and work together and can play different but interconnected roles. It is no coincidence that we talk about new urban metabolisms. It is precisely the ability to metabolize new needs, giving you answers and rethinking places with regard to proximity. Sandana site is a central place and rethinking it means to consider that its proximity and the fact that is already inhabited, but also the fact that it needs to be filled with projects for green areas, for productive improvements, social and cultural activities. In Santana, Europe and 16 will make us reflect on a different urban mobility and on a more conscious use of the territory, the landscape and the rediscovery of the local economy. I know that this year's topic, Levin Cities, has been very important and I want to thank promoters, organizers publicly in this moment. They gave us the opportunity to follow with our work. Thanks to the professionals who will implement these solutions. Good morning, everyone. I would like to start by saying a few things. First, we are living in an extraordinary time. And uh, I believe that one of the virtues of administrators and politicians instead of being cross-eyed, namely the ability to keep one eye on the current situation. We are not yet out of the health and economic emergency. We have not yet fully understood the social emergency. So one eye is on the present, the other eye is looking far ahead. I think we are living in an extraordinary moment and we may realize it in 20 or 30 years, but a period of great opportunity is opening up. Second, I would like to say that no one today can claim to have a perfect formula unless it is someone very pretentious and presumptuous by nature. Hence the need to compare experiences, meet, clash, between people with different experiences and skills, even those that are not apparently very closely related and try to find solutions together. And this is the reason why I sincerely thank you for this opportunity. And I don't want to forget any of those who are making a contribution along these experiences. I'm very proud of. When Marilla came to Sandona last year, it even snowed. So for me, it was a sign. I'll start my presentation with a quote by Calvino. I often ask myself, because I believe that the purpose of public administration is not to provide services, but to satisfy needs. There are questions as old as humankind, food, a home, a family. There are questions or needs that I think we have overlooked, but which have also received attention thanks to the experience we are having. Eh, 
Eh, allora, una collocazione geografica di San Donato. Eh, allora, una collocazione geografica di San Donato. So, North Eastern Italy, within the Veneto region, and in particular about 10 kilometers from the Venice Lagoon, which is a UNESCO site. As far as connections are concerned, we are on Corridor 5, Lisbon, Kiev, and therefore with road and rail infrastructures, and two international airports 20 30 minutes away. Venice itself is half an hour away, and we are about 20 kilometers from the Venetian coast. And also important fact, we are also connected through cycle routes of international standing, the Munich-Venice route, and since the other European side is in Apulia, we are also connected with the next Adriatic cycle route that will link Trieste to Santa Maria di Leuca. We have important neighboring attractions, 24 million tourists come to the coast of Venice, in addition to the Venice City of Art. There is also a major commercial attraction, an outlet store that receives around 4 million visitors a year. Clearly, having been set up only a few years ago, it has taken some resources away from the city center, since it is located only four minutes from Sandana. This is pretty much the context of our urban center. Sandana has about 42,000 inhabitants, of whom 35,000 are in the fourth district that make up the center. Within this center, we have identified the urban business district, a space within which we have mapped 550 spaces occupied for more than 85% by commercial activities, professional services, or other services. About 13% are so-called vacant shops. Within this space, one of the sites is guarded by the objects that will then also be the field of the design competition. Bus station, historical present in the center of Sandana, which will be transferred to a new intermodal hub that is currently under construction and which by the end of next year will see the construction of a new train station alongside the new bus station. Physically, we are talking about an intermodal hub that is located 1,100 meters north of the current site. Here is the perimeter on the left, Piazza 4 November, with the bus station. This is the perimeter that the region has asked us for as a part of this regional project that Valeria will talk about later. Another important element that is part of our recent administrative history, our participation in an urban network, with which we have been talking as a leader, together with 10 other European cities of a similar size, to ours on the subject of urban center revitalization. This is to say that the openness to ideas, suggestions coming from other countries are very much appreciated here. And I can't deny that we have many experiences to draw on. A few words on the vision of the city that we have developed. Urban center is a natural place to live. In these eight years, we have given back to the countryside about 40 hectares that were destined to be built on, clearly accepting a development in height that is compatible in some areas and not in others, consistent with the demographic, demographic growth, albeit slow, that we are experiencing. City center is a place capable of combining good services cultural heritage, economic growth and quality of life. A city centre is a place where people can meet, stop, 
relax, pleasant place without pollution or irritating noise, where everything you need is within walking distance. Popular with younger generations who feel spaces are their own. A place with no empty shop windows, where there is room for both historical activities and new jobs, meaning those that have not yet been invented, but which will provide food for most of our children. A place where something happens every week. This is a bit like the vision that we are seeking in the context of our administrative work, also including the implementation, where this experience of Europe and fits in. This is one of the projects for the requalification of parts of the city center in architectural element that is particularly affected here, namely galleries. I will end with this image to underline some concepts expressed by Engineer LaRusso. The first is either urban regeneration goes hand in hand with human regeneration, or, in my opinion, it will be a failure. These two dimensions, which I think have traveled separately for too long a time, and there are several architectural testimonies that have in some way ruined the Veneto landscape over the last decade, must be reconciled and combined. This is an important aspect. Second, the importance of the so-called next generation. I am convinced that we have to put boys and girls in a position to do better than we have been able to do. This image depicts one of the most beautiful experiences we are working on, namely the collaboration with Gifoni Experience Film Festival, dealing with uh, cinema for children, because this topic of how innovation is born, imagining that children can be protagonists if adults are also capable of taking at least one step to the side, if not actually backwards. If this is not the case, we will struggle to think and plan, share and love the world of tomorrow. The focus on this starts to clarify the aspects of the program that the architects are going to address with the European side. Because although the attention is focused on the very important project implemented on Porta Nuova, which in this case is the driving force that has generated this sort of reflections on the city, it is equally important to point out and reflect on the emptying process of this part of the ATVO building and its importance, the importance of its role with respect to the trade district and to the city centre. I would like to reconnect to what has been said so far because on the one hand it is important to understand the structure of the district which certainly as the perimeter identified by the mayor but within the structure there are axes that we as administration are trying to make much more evident at the moment the only pedestrian stretch perceived as commercial is a first stretch of this axis from the P to the Duomo. The second stretch which Marilla is indicating is the new section of Silvio Borso Trentin which for some years has been made pedestrian only on a temporary basis as an experiment. Once the feasibility has been verified this transition towards a redevelopment of spaces is becoming permanent. What does this mean? It means that Piazza Independenza is going to connect with the whole axis of Corso Trentin and in turn it connects with another network that continues on Via Ancilotto, 
the uh, tradici martiri and whole network which has within it space hierarchies but always with the presence of businesses at the foot of the buildings this system which needs to be strengthened in terms of perception has been redefined thanks to the administration's intervention in recent years with a better road network with a cycle network running along all the axes you can see that there is the cycle path that can be designed on the roadway with respect to this topic of a better perception of the central axis what you see as the blue area is the TVO headquarters a pole hub of this system almost the head of this octopus that has among its arms a bridge towards the Piave River in addition to the topic of recognizability visibility and, and vision that the mayor identified earlier within the ATVO space we are talking about there is also the topic of living cities and the management of public space and we have also tried to think about the market and other functions but today's challenge is precisely to identify through design a highly attractive economic function also with respect to a series of innovative topics such as sustainability cycling economy that can revolve around the use of bicycles we had also tried to think about the possibility of opening a new rock museum we were talking to the mayor about this possibility not much for rock music but rather to bring more tourists this could be used to redefine the space giving it an attractive entertaining function that could somehow adjust the competitive dynamics of the area there is certainly a readily a theater in the historic center of San Dona with plenty of seats and good programming but we have a space that could in some way take on a fundamental role within the urban dynamic the vitality of commerce therefore also of markets is basically an indicator of the vitality of the historic center or of the urban center which is made up of many other factors such as accessibility quality of the building the quality of public space green areas and quality of the shop windows the challenge is precisely this to identify the dynamics that are still latent the european designers in this european version are younger than us they may have different perception about the use of space and they might identify and intercept more effectively important solutions in a better way than what could be done through regulatory plans and traditional planning tools as we can see in this map the research and the whole axis that guides the dynamics within the city but the centrality of Piazza Independenza and the trade district must be supported by project proposal that concerns ATVO without forgetting the issue of the river which is certainly an equally attractive topic also as regards entertainment the square river dynamics is hardly comparable to that of a seafront however the river plays a fundamental role in the dynamics also in terms of temporal aspects for the management of space and habits of the inhabitants of San Donà. The administration had identified a small dock for boats before there was a flooding. At the moment, the construction site is underway for the reconstruction of the docking station. 
which in this case generates an innovative modern dynamic of slow tourism on the river, which may represent a starting point with respect to the fact that tourists could somehow talk and need to use the city centre and this new space, this ATVO space, which represents an opportunity to rethink spaces. An interesting element is uh, the fact that ATVO is adjacent to a school which will soon be relocated and this will be a further space to be repurposed. This could be interesting because next to the school we have a pedestrian connection with Viale della Libertà which leads to Piazza Independenza and so this uh, group of buildings could also be interesting for some ideas that might be related to the future development of the Ativo headquarters. The European project becomes a fundamental strategic key for the development of the city from now on. One in all, I just, but uh, ironically, I have dedicated my entire professional life to water. I still love my wine. But uh, from a professional point of view, I've always worked on water issues, initially as agricultural drainage. Uh, for the last 30 years, I've been working on green roofs, green technologies. As far as Etivo is concerned, there is a peculiarity. From the slide I showed before, you can see on the roof six green areas. There are six test fields that we set up last year. They are the implementation of a patent we made two years ago of a new irrigation system that saves about 70% of the water necessary for the survival of plants. It is a research and development project that we are doing together with the UF of Mestre and the University of Agronomy of Padova. When people think of green roofs, they think of the aesthetic effect they can have. In reality, green roofs are an enormous resource for making the city sustainable and for solving some really important urban planning problems. I'm referring in particular to the aspect of managing water bombs as well as of managing heat island and also the reduction of fine dust. The concept underlying this research and development work is that water is energy. Water is capable of radically changing the urban response to the problem of overeating. So we have to conserve water and we have to reuse it in the most efficient way so that it can positively affect the climate of the city. We are setting up a system such that the water bombs in June last year didn't drain a liter of water from these green areas. We managed to store all the water which was sufficient to irrigate four different types of vegetation without using one liter of tap water. We succeeded in making a greenery independent. On this roof, we used sedum. They are very low water consuming plants. And even though they are watered in Italy, in spite of everything, we usually don't do that. On that roof, they were planted on 2 June last year. And apart from the first month in which we watered them to make them take roof, they have never been 
watered state, we have made the Macroterme meadow, which on the ground needed about 7 litres of water per day per square metre, live roofed with one and a half litres of water per square metre. This situation allowed us to achieve good results in terms of air temperatures around these models that we created, which were three, four degrees lower than the air temperature in adjacent areas without green roofs. These are pictures of sedums one year after planting without irrigation from July until this year. For those who know this kind of cultivation, this is a macroterma, a wheat that is mainly used in the south that has had one litre of water a day per square metre. These are the counters for the tests we carried out. This is a flowering meadow that we have kept alive as an alternative to sedums with about one litre of water per square meter. We are having a verification regarding the amount of water that is discharged from the roof, followed by the Consorcio di Bonifica. Because this, if the system works, we can think that the roofs of warehouses, shopping centers, of theaters can become lamination basins and can really have an impact on people's quality of life because lowering the temperature in urban areas by four, five degrees during summer the lowering temperature within buildings would mean having 32 degrees outside and 26 inside which means not turning on the air conditioning system discovered something that we didn't manage to read in the report that we are currently bringing to the attention of all those who will be doing projects in Sandona. The report basically said that Sandona is below sea level, obviously has problems with the water supply system and so on, but I think the next step, which is to turn a problem into a, a resource, is extremely interesting. It means finding on a territory, earlier someone spoke of urban regeneration as human regeneration, and this is an example of human regeneration. There is already a resource in the area, which is that of this innovative SME, which deals with using water to make energy and also green roofs in a city that is quite mineral. You have seen from the aerial photos that it is a very built up city that has, I think, a very special relationship with the river. Very often these cities don't have a lot of green spaces within the center, but it is assumed that the proximity of the river is already sufficient. In this case, the idea of using surfaces that may not even be roofs, but urban surfaces. To make something like this seems extremely interesting to me. The vegetation itself in and around Saint Donat, which is on the roof, is also native vegetation. Vegetation that helps you save, at the same time consume water at the right moment to prevent it from creating damage. I think this needs to be taken seriously in consideration by the designers because we would perhaps have simply undertaken a project of ideas thinking of water as a danger and not water as a resource. In addition to the experience mentioned by Santin, we are also testing rain gardens, this kind of experience great gardens that we have started to create in some schools and in some car parks. Perhaps it wasn't mentioned, but we are waiting for the outcome of the life call for tenders, which also foresees the replication of the technology we mentioned earlier. On the roof of the new Ativo bus station, 
also in some situations of the territory behind the current Etivo station. We would like to implement the redevelopment of the green with the recollection of water, in this case, collection instead of conveying it into the sewerage system. We sometimes have the problem of excessive rainfall, but also times of drought. This experience came from our green manager in collaboration with the University of Padua. And all these projects which we are carrying out, we would like to see replicated in the area. Ours is a city where traffic is constantly passing through. Even today, some people still blame us for blocking the pedestrian area to some extent from the Ponte della Vittoria to Corso Trentin. Very few of the people who crossed that access by car then stayed in the city. Therefore, they do not, did not experience the city. The effort made by the, the administration has been to think of a space that can be inhabited. If I imagine the Ativo station, I also imagine it as a space to be rethought within the framework of this consideration we have made for the entire city center. So I imagine a space in which I host people, a space in which I can also communicate. Not only do people communicate with each other, but spaces also communicate something to the rest. Every intervention, every work, I think, should tell something, should mean something. So, thinking about giving new space to green areas, sustainability is undoubtedly one of the most important issues we are working on, with examples such as energy revolution of buildings, lighting, creating woods wherever possible. Consider that San Donà currently has 140 hectares of green space with about 20,000 plants and we have a park, wood of, of uh, 12 hectares. We now have 36 hectares of woodland and we have applied for a new call to expand it to six and a half. We don't have large areas where we can accommodate new wood, but we do have sufficiently large parks that can accommodate wooded areas. In addition to sustainability, there are some nice experience, experiences which I would like to see within a Ativo space, an idea of biodiversity, which we are carrying forward with experiences in schools, which we sometimes also proposing the square to remark that during this moment that however do not really have their own space. I believe that within such a space, for example, someone can enter and find scenarios where the five senses are somehow involved. We also need to rediscover the passion and love for these spaces so that you feel they are your own spaces, everyone's spaces. Every space should be designed so that it becomes everyone's space, so that everyone feels it's there, so that they respect it. It is true that from a logistical point of view, it is an important hub, our city. We have a range of services that can be of interest for those who want to visit the surrounding area, but I wouldn't limit myself to this. Our city must not just think of hosting someone because they have to transition to somewhere else. Our city must be able to host someone because they want to visit our city, because it has something to offer. It can be a different experience compared to Venice, Yazolo, mountains or other type of context. Our reclaimed territories have a lot to tell. We have taken care of the 
cycling master plan that concerns the whole territory of Eastern Venice. And there are the conditions to visit all the excellences of our territories by bike. You certainly don't go sunbathing as you do at the seaside, but I think our countryside is beautiful. San Dona has 27 kilometers to go by bike, just visiting green roads. This dynamic of understanding the use of public space and the cycling dimension is also happening in San Dona. As we were saying before, the construction site on Corso Silvio Trentin has certainly caused some transformations and this need to take possession of public space was taken with skepticism by shopkeepers and locals last year. Last Saturday, however, both the population and the restorators appreciated this kind of new use of public space. That Tivo space will have to bring things that will be worthy of a ad hoc visit to Saint Denis that for an innovative, extraordinary, special function, perhaps one that we have not imagined yet, that can only reinforce the positioning of Sandana with respect to its surroundings, playing with the public space that somehow tries to have its own innovative and even unusual life in some ways. I wanted to start from a reflection that came from the analogist Fantin, which struck me very much. I think that for us architects, the name Le Corbusier is fairly well known. In 1923, within the formulation of the five points, one of them was the roof garden. I was very pleased to see that finally, after 98 years, it is catching on. I think it's a great contribution. It is important, as the mayor said, this being cross-eyed, which I think is synonymous with beauty, after all, Venus is cross-eyed in the sense of holding together many issues, disciplines, themes, and perhaps beyond the contingency or this dimension of pursuit of technology is taking hold. As if pure technology or technique, even better, could solve our problems, perhaps this dimension should also convey a new meaning, get a new meaning, and identify a theme within the project. This experience of Europe, and which I've always seen, even as a student, as a great opportunity, even a premonition of a certain dimension, the European one to which we belong, I think it can allow this project theme the possibility of identifying pilot solutions for the contemporary world. What does it mean to live in a city and transform spaces that are no longer places into new places. There is no doubt that as things stand, the station has a function for better or worse for as long as it functions, as it, as it works. The problem will actually be when this function ceases to exist, it will become a space with a huge question mark, so these initiatives are welcome. In fact, I think they should be replicable. This dimension of uh, suburbs and also origins. Apparently, Venice takes its breath away from this area at the tone of its development. And it might be interesting to take advantage of this opportunity to confront project visions that go beyond the local dimension of an area, but also compare shared views of seeing things and thinking.
I think it is a socially, environmentally, economically sustainable city that you can visit and live in and also work in. I heard a couple of interesting things. I took some notes and ideas. As an expert of sustainable mobility, I liked very much the word connections and the word mobility. An important piece of data that was included was that of the city in relation to its systems, the rail infrastructure, cycling, but also with the attractions of the area. We know that every city user, every citizen expresses a demand for mobility in order to reach different tourist places, historical, artistic and landscape heritage, it would be important for planners and designers to pay attention to this system of relations. The city of 15 minutes within this district that is being studied must then connect with the cities of 100 minutes or more, which is the multifunctional one. The new polarity that we want to build within the project area must be related to the rest to the rest of the system. How do you take care of urban spaces and as in other contexts happens, make citizens become co responsible in urban regeneration processes by getting these different tribes to work together to create a sense of community. We also talked about mobility, new polarity, but also nature-based solutions. So green infrastructure and also green roofs, but there are also many other solutions. These are fundamental today. They are required by the European community in the recovery fund they will be eligible for funding. They will only be important and pr produce positive effects only if they are at the same time able to generate services and not economic activities. This is important. It's important to create something that doesn't remain there, stuck and still, but something that can generate a new economy. The thing that moved the most was the next generation that the mayor was talking about, and he said, how can we create conditions to make young people protagonists? Italy is still far from it, far away from this issue. I hope that Europe, as it always does, will open these new channels to involve and make these young people protagonists who will bring many different visions that we should make possible to be implemented and replicated. Best of luck to the groups taking part in the competition. Give the floor to Maggio. I think it's absolutely right for me to acknowledge how proud and honored I am that everything that is being done has involved this group of people who are chatting with us here today, reflecting and thinking about our territory. To echo President Chandeli, who spoke earlier about young people in Europe, Erasmus, teamwork. I will also briefly share with you my own small experience and opinion. I belong to a generation that I think is very lucky. We have the privilege of being a bridge between two extraordinary eras. We saw the birth of digital technology, but we also had the opportunity to appreciate and understand what came before. I think it is more necessary and even more fun to act and to take the situation in hand, to look around, to network, to map, to seize the opportunities there are offered to us and trying to change things, mobility, energy, architecture, health, cities. Today we need new tools and new ways of thinking about new spaces. 
we need to put back into circulation to metabolize, as European proposes, a system that necessarily speaks a new digital language that moves on a very fast infrastructure, apparently invisible, but uh, which is having devastating economic and social repercussions. Not that this destruction is always negative. Once again, I quote, as did my colleague Palmarini, Le Corbusier, a sentence dates back to when he was very young and arrived in Paris for the very first time and said, Paris told me, burn what you have loved and love what you have burned. Why can't we have the same strength today? The same vision that led hard, for example, to transform itself at the beginning of the 21st century. I think that today we need to evolve. If we don't succeed in this evolution, we will disappear forever. The possibility that competition like Europe offers us is to rethink the beating heart of an extraordinary city like the one I live in, which is Saint Donat. And during the inspection, we heard the needs and vision of Etibor, which owns the spaces. But now it's time to hear your voice. How would you imagine the heart of your cities in five, ten, fifty years' time? I think it's it's really an extraordinary opportunity to share what will be the new needs of the city, new people with whom it will have to relate, new forms, new energies, colors with which you will have to deal. Mr. Fantin earlier mentioned the challenges we face, find us water bombs, climate, I think these are wonderful challenges that we have to solve with creativity, with uh, the idea of reconnecting our urbanity, our urban city and our community. On this point, I would also like to pick up on the initial speech by my colleague from the School of Engineering and Architecture. I think the solution lies in curiosity and in interdisciplinarity. We have done this in recent years with our association, with events such as TEDx and with the Order of Architects of Venice, with Marilia during the pandemic, with the Future Communities Project. The solution also lies to quote my friend and colleague Michele, who was quoting intern Barico. Once again, in audacity, it is here and now. The moment we cannot waste. I truly wish all those who will take part in this competition the very best of luck. I hope you have fun, first and foremost. And if you need anything at local level, if you want to come to the city and get to know our area, or even just share some good ideas, our association, our association and I are at your disposal. I think it will be a great challenge, first of all, intellectually, then also artistically, for those who decide to give it a go, to try. I repeat, I believe we will be able to find a winning solution if we put ourselves on the line, if we do not think we have the truth in our pockets, but have a great curiosity and desire to look for ways out together. I hope this can translate into a hug as soon as we have a chance to meet. And I thank you in advance for the contribution that you can make to this adventure called Life in the Cities. I would like to thank the Mayor again, who's here, and also those present for their great strength and motivation. And I'm convinced that we will go all the way to living up all expectations, not only yours, but also those of the competitors. Thank you very much. Greetings also from Fabio Turchetto, president of Etivo, who has an incredible enthusiasm in facing this European experience. You will see in the video of the tour where he was present and accompanied us to the end. And there you will also see many interesting things.